हेलो एवरीवन आई एम डॉक्टर वसंत बोरस्ते फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ कॉमर्स एडिशन कॉलेज नासिक टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द सब्जेक्ट नोन एज कॉर्पोरेट अकाउंटिंग फॉर द सेमेस्टर 4 आवर चैप्टर इज चैप्टर नंबर 3 व्हिच इज नोन एज अकाउंटिंग फॉर लिक्विडेशन ऑफ कंपनीज इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ लिक्विडेशन ऑफ कंपनीज वेयर वी हैव टू सी व्हाट इज द प्रायोरिटी ऑफ पेमेंट व्हाट इज कॉल्ड एज लिक्विडेशन and what kind of statement the liquidator has to be prepared during the process of liquidation here you can see the meaning uh, meaning of liquidation that is meaning of accounting meaning of accounting for liquidation of companies liquidation is a legal procedure by which the corporate life is, uh, life of a company is brought to an end it simply means that a company is going to be shut down a company which is wound up need not necessarily be a bankrupt company Sometimes even solvent companies are also liquidated. The second uh, meaning or meaning from the legal point of view is that liquidation is the process of debt laden company to wind up its operations and sell its assets in order to repay trade liabilities and obligations. A company is liquidated when it is ascertained that the business is not in a state of state to continue. The simple meaning of liquidation is that when any company goes to liquid liquidation, it is called uh, it is called only when if the pro, uh, the financial condition of a company is not in a good, or we can say a company which is uh, bankrupt, or many times it may be uh, declared by the shareholder that company should be shut down. In that case, the liquidator has to pay all the liabilities which have been shown on the liability side from the sale of assets. So the main work of the liquidator is to to assert uh, to ascertain the assets, to sell out all the assets in the market, to call the call call the calls if uh, any from the shareholders. Then he has to sell the assets, and from the sale of assets, he has to pay the liability whatever on the liability side. Keep it in mind that the liquidator should pay all the assets and liability as per the payment order which is given by the companies at 1956 and 2013. Basically liquidation is a legal procedure by which the corporate life uh, of any company to an end. So the liquidator should be done the process as per the, as per the laws and regulations given by time to time by the government as well as from the Companies Act 2013 and 1956. Liquidation or winding up is the process by which a company is dissolved and its proprietorship or we can say properties are administered for the benefit of its creators and members. It simply means the liquidator has to sell all the assets, all the properties or, uh, and administer that means he has to pay all the creators and uh, creators or we can say a liability of its own on which is shown on the liability side the realize uh, the liquidation is involves realization of company's assets payment of all the liabilities and return of money back to the members in proportion of contribution made by them to the capital of the company basically uh, in short we can say liquidation means winding up of company and winding up of company means realization of assets of the company payment of the liabilities and distribution of the residual amount amongst the members of the company. Here are some characteristics of the company. The first one is realization. It means that the liquidator has to sell off various assets and properties. He has to collect the amount that is col uh, collection from called up capital if any is there. Then he has to discharge all the payment made for settlement of various debts and obligations. And finally, distribution means what? Refund of surplus, if any, among the shareholders as per their preferential rights. These are some, uh, these are four characteristics of liquidation where the main work of liquidators is already mentioned over here. He has to sell all the assets and pay all the money. And if there is any surplus or any amount is balanced with the liquidator, he can pay the, pay the amount to the shareholders as per their preferential right. As preferential credit shareholders have a preferential right after that he can pay an amount to the equity shareholders here you can see the modes of winding up 
basically there are three modes of winding up first one is compulsory winding up by the court or tribunal second one is voluntary winding up and third one is winding up under the court and uh, the supervision of the court whereas the voluntary winding up is maybe by the members or creditors itself here you can see the order of payment or priority of payment where the liquidator had, has to pay first of all the legal charges whatever legal charges are there he has to pay after the payment of legal charges he can pay his own remuneration that is called as liquidator's remuneration so uh, many times it may happen the liquidator's remuneration is fixed at a fixed percentage on sale of assets or amount distributed among the creditors the third one is cost of liquidation that is uh, 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 realization expenses or whatever expenses have been made for winding up then preferential creditors or uh, the preferential creditors have to pay after that he can pay the debenture holders or other creditors secured by the floating charge after that the liquidator can pay the unsecured creditors which have been not secured from any uh, any kind of assets and finally he can pay preferential shareholders and if there is any surplus he may pay amount to the equity shareholders so this is the order or um, priority of payment which is given in the companies act 1956 and 2013 as per this uh, as per this uh, hierarchy he has to pay the amount to the uh, liability holders according to the law here you can see the liquidator's final statement of account of abc limited as on particular date uh, the form is given in form number 156 uh, under the rule 329 as per companies act 2956 and 2013 here the liquidator has to call the money that is he may receive he may will receive the amount that is the receipts whatever he have received from the sale of asset it, it has to be mentioned on the receipt side and after that whatever payment he has to be going to pay on the payment side he will mention the payments so with this i would like to say thank you thank you very much in the next lecture we will see how the example practical example will be solved thank you